all for coming tonight um, to our candidates night. Um, thank you again to all the candidates for the different positions running either in state, county, or local elections. Um, I have kind of drawn names out of the hat, and, and so there's no order of how they're going to speak, um, but they will tell you a little bit about themselves and what they intend to do. Um, and they will each have a five minute timer, which I brought with me. And um, then if time permits, after all the candidates have had a chance to speak, we'll try and take some questions to specific candidates. So um, our next candidate is Jonathan Sackett. Do not, do not know me. My name is Jonathan Sackett, and I'm running for Mayor of Rockaway Township. I'm currently the Ward 4 Councilman and Council President. I've lived in Rockaway Township for over 35 years, and my family has been here since 1973. I attended Birchwood Elementary School, Copeland Middle School, and Morris Mills High School, class of 1996. After high school, I attended Rutgers University in New Brunswick. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree majoring in Economics with a minor in Accounting. I'm an account executive with the biggest paint supplier in the United States and a successful small business owner. I run Family Martial Arts Center Karate School for Sydney. I have four children. Aaron, 14 years old, is a freshman in high school at Morris County School of Technology. Shannon, 12 years old, is a seventh grade at Copa Middle School. Matthew, 10 years old, fourth grade at Stony Brook. And Jennifer, seven years old, second grade at Stony Brook. My wife, Lori, of 15 years, also grew up in Rockway Township attending Birchwood, Copeland, and Morris Hills High School. She's currently a child care provider at a small business in Rockaway Township as well. We also have two small dogs. <laughs> as you can see, Sacker roots run deep here in Rockaway Township and will continue to for many, year, many, many years to come. My mother, Lois, still lives in child at home in the Birchwood section of town and is a substitute nurse in Rockaway Township schools. I volunteered in town for many years. I've coached soccer, basketball, football and baseball for both boys and girls. I'm currently an assistant coach in the Rockway Valley Soccer League for my oldest son. I volunteered at my synagogue for many years on the education committee helping make a dash loan to Ridge School, one of the best in Morris County. I'm the chair of the Park and Recreation Committee in town. I'm on the Citizen Recreation Committee. I'm the chair of the Economic Development Committee, and I'm a member of the Rockway Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm proud to be running one of the most diverse tickets in Rockway Township history on the Rockaway Township New Leadership Team. We have many different backgrounds, which includes a nurse, a teacher, an IT professional, as well as a stock trader. I've proven to be bipartisan, being able to work with all parties involved. I have no personal vendettas. We need a fresh start. I plan to evaluate all positions in this town, which include the town attorney, town prosecutor, and many other positions that have been glossed over for many, many years to make changes where appropriate. I believe Rockway Green, being here pretty much my whole life. I always do what's right for the residents and children of this town. Now is the right time to elect me as your next mayor, instead of constantly going to the same party over and over since the 1990s. I can provide a change everyone is looking for, and I'll be able to help Rockway Township truly reach its full potential. Since I've been on council, I've been able to accomplish many things. It's not been an easy task. I kept my word when I ran for council and brought back Rockway Township Day. We were able to raise close to $9,000 for the town and our kids. And in 2020, it'll be even bigger and bigger and better. I helped create Ordinance 18-06, which helps to make sure money is being used wisely by our sports programs. I was hearing for many years there's no accountability, and now all parents will know where their money is being spent by the sports programs. This year, I helped spearhead and cut over $500,000 out of our budget. There was a lot of wasteful spending by the administration, and all the cuts that I helped make did not affect our residents. I'm very proud of this. The Peterson Field renovations have been a huge, huge talking point in this town. They were glossed over for many years and never taken seriously until I was elected in 2017. I spoke about that in my campaign in 2017, and I've been pushing for it since then. 
I'm the chair of the Park and Recreation Committee, and my committee has put together a master plan for Peterson Field. We have shown it to all sports programs and are ready to push it forward. Being involved with most of the sports programs since 2010, I know what parents and kids have been asking for and how they want to have our fields at Bessemer Morris County. I will make sure to see this project through sooner than later with minimal cost to the residents and something we will be very proud of. Since taking over as council president, I've been working on many things that have been neglected. I put together an ordinance committee that has been working hard, looking at all our town ordinances and starting to update them. This has been an issue for a while. They're looking at the Airbnb issue, which we are currently having in Whitemill Lake, and putting together an ordinance for that. They're also looking at our land use ordinances that have been approached by Wawa, but since they're outdated, we have to update them before we continue to discuss anything. We need to put the Bullyville issue to rest. I right away put together a board, assistant, board of assessment committee to get to work on solving this problem and ready to tackle any issues that come their way. I look forward to resolving this issue that's been plaguing our town since the 1990s. We need to be proactive with our infrastructure in town instead of reactive. We constantly have water main breaks and road issues and spending lots of money to rush and fix them. I will put together a master plan for the town to avoid the issues that come our way. We need to put together more shared services agreements with our neighboring towns. Once again, safety is also important for me and uh, I want to show more diversity in Rockaway Township and I appreciate you coming out to vote for me, Jonathan Sackett, on November 5th. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Who was here in June when we had the primary? Okay, so. You gotta give me a little Magical. bit more time. I just put it off. Okay, I'm gonna give you a brief uh, synopsis of who I am, what my experience is, because I believe that experience is gonna carry this town forward. That's been a rough two years for Rockaway Township. I've been serving as your mayor for almost a year now. Uh, Mike Dachison, as you know, passed away. I was elected last November, and it's been a very uh, interesting two years, to say the least. For the residents who are here, they you know, they know exactly what I'm talking about. I believe that we've lost two years of time through infighting, through disagreements, through lawsuits, through we've lost time. And what's gonna get us back on track? What is gonna make us make up that time? It's gonna be an experienced team. Uh, it's gonna be the Rockaway First team. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a resident of Rockaway Township for 28 years. My wife is a lifelong resident. Raise your hand, Michelle. She comes to the council meetings to support me and to support what I try to do for the town. My, my career in politics started with the Board of Education. I served on the Board of Education for 12 years. I have two sons. My older son is disabled. That's what got me involved. I wanted to make things better in Rockaway Township. I served 12 years on the Board of Education, trying to put different programs in place that would help our children, that would make our quality of life for our children uh, in that position better in Rockaway Township. Now, what, what have I done for our community since then, since going off the Board of, since being off the Board of Education? I ran, I was put on the planning board before I was, before I ran for council. And I liked what I saw. I liked working in the community. I liked trying to make improvements. And then I was elected to be a councilman back in 2016. I was elected and I started my career as a councilman. There's a number of initiatives that I would like to establish in what I hope would be my first full term as mayor of Rockaway Township. However, no initiative can be successful without good government. Therefore, my first initiative will be to continue to restore and maintain a cooperative relationship between the mayor, administration, and council that existed before the last two years. This means a sharing of thoughts and plans and working across the aisle to do what is best for the township and its citizens. Now, I think that I have not just said the words, but I think that I have walked the walk here in town. Everyone knows that Rockaway Township Green has been my motto, and that I serve all of you, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, and I don't believe that any one party, um, I don't look at a party system, I certainly haven't looked at it in this town. So I have not only, I'm not saying that 
I, I believe in a certain thing in non part and uh, bipartisanship. I have lived it. I have lived it. I have supported Democratic candidates as well as Republican candidates. I support who I feel is best for Rockaway Township and who is going to support my town. A second initiative would be the cons co consistent effort by my administration to maintain a high quality of municipal services for the benefit of our citizens and to do so while stressing efficiency and cost effectiveness. Okay, I want to talk about our budget. Last year, myself and my administration delivered a reduction in the municipal portion of your taxes. A reduction. And that was done through creative planning, through lots of meetings with administration, through the, with department heads. The township, if you look at your bill, for those of you that read, that look into your tax bill, 25%, approximately 25% of your tax bill is controlled by the mayor and the council. The rest of it falls on county tax and bulk of it is education. So what we did is took that 25% that we control and it's very difficult because a lot of that is, is contractual. Um, I settled three contracts, police contract, council six, and contracts and administrative uh, raises. I did all of that in one year's time working cooperatively with our unions, working with our administration to give us a cost reduction on our budget. So I've, I've delivered that. Third, I plan to work with the school districts and attempt to address cost savings that can provide tax relief for the school component of our tax bill. Okay, we just put in SRO, we put an SRO into our school. How did I do that? How did I defray some of the cost? Part of the bill is being paid for by Rockaway Township, by the municipal portion. Part of it is going to be paid for. <laughs> wow, that's not enough time. Okay. okay, thank you. If you have any questions, there's so much to go over. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to go over it. There's so much to go over that I've done in a year. It's hard to capture it all in one in five minutes. But I'll be here, and you can speak with me afterwards. We can talk. Thank you. Well. Susan Herman Broyko. Township. Um, I chose to raise my daughters here as well. Like we came back to raise them in a neighborhood I grew up in. Um, I've worked in the corporate world as a junior financial analyst, and I've also worked in a school in Rockaway Borough um, as a paraprofessional and in class support. And finally, and also I worked my way into substitute teaching, um, K through eighth. Um, I left there. Um, when my father became ill, and I took care of him for about two years until he passed. Um, I have a degree um, in business, associate's degree. I chaired many fundraisers uh, through the schools, and I worked as a Girl Scout leader with my daughters for many years as well. Um, I'm running for council basically for checks and balances. I started attending council meetings a couple of years ago, and um, I was just a little, um, upset with what was happening. I know that's all changing, so that's a good thing, but that's how I got started. Um, I think the council should represent all of the people, not just self-interest or certain people. There's a, there's a lot of diversity in the town. I met a lot of people recently. Um, they, I, they gave me some issues, if I can find it. Um, I'll go back to that. My dad was a councilman when I was younger, and I saw how uh, he served with integrity and honesty, and I really would love to follow in his footsteps. I will work hard for the people of my of my ward and the town. I met many of them when I was um, recently canvassing, and their main issues are the high property taxes, uh, council lawsuits, and the safety of their neighborhoods. Evidently, a lot of the navigation systems are putting cars through streets that normally wouldn't have high traffic. So they're very upset with the reckless driving and the speeders. So I would like to get involved with that and 
help out. Even if I don't get elected, I would love to work with that, make our neighborhood safer. Um, and if anyone has any questions for me, I'll be around afterwards, but thank you. to Ward 1 <coughs> as a council person and, and starting to move in the right direction. I'm proud to be part of the Rockaway First team and I'm proud of all the accomplishments that Joe Jackson and Jonathan Sack and Mayor Puzio, we, we've started to do the change and uh, I want to continue to do the change. So um, walking the ward while doing the recall, um, there is a lot of concern with the lawsuits. Well, Nobody's going to stop the lawsuits, but I think they'll go away on their own. You know, once we get new people, that'll just all go away. So, uh, again, I just, I look forward to continuing to serve the, the Ward 1. Um, I know Peterson Field is a big issue with me. Um, and one of my biggest things that I've seen over the past two years that have driven, that drove me nuts is uh, residents coming up, asking for things, and everything falls on deaf ears. So. No more deaf ears. People will listen. My email is on the website. Email me. My phone number is on the website. Call me. And uh, I look forward to continuing to serve. Thank you. Next candidate is John Knapp. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Pat, for hosting us again. And thank you, Doug, for uh, taping as usual. Um, I, uh, I actually, unlike everyone else, uh, most of my, uh, my running mates and most of my opposing slate, I took a little different path to get up here. Um, I did not, uh, I have not grown up in this town my whole life. I've been here five years. I actually grew up in the Pine Barrens, uh, South Jersey, son of a federal agent and an educator. Um, I've been married for seven years. I have a two-year-old son at home, and uh, but you know when I was growing up down the Pine Barrens, um, I was actually an Eagle Scout, uh, so I'm very familiar with the thought process of serving the community. I've uh, I've grown <coughs> up with it. So um, and then uh, once uh, you know childhood and my teenage years ended, I decided to come up north of the Turnpike, and I went to Ramapo College, graduated with a degree in computer science. Uh, for the past 15 years, I've been a software developer, and uh, one thing that uh, my experience as a software developer has given me is um, it's given me the experience of being presented problems and figuring out ways to solve them, which is incredibly important in all walks of life, but especially in all forms of government. Um, when uh, I started to get involved uh, about Two, about two years ago, uh, I just uh, started getting involved in politics, didn't like what's happening nationally, so I decided to start at the local level and uh, see what was happening. And what I saw what was happening at the local level was um, not spectacular, <laughs> put it lightly. Uh, so um, I uh, decided to um, 
uh, I applied for and got appointed to the Tech Advisory Committee. And then uh, later on, a few months later, I decided that I was going to run for council and try to uh, bring a little bit more civility, a little more change, and bring my, uh, my experience, my skill set uh, to the council. Um, one thing that uh, I think Jonathan already mentioned was uh, fiscal responsibility. Um, I'm, I am a Democrat, but I am a fiscally conservative Democrat. I don't like having money spent wildly. It just makes me uncomfortable. Um, I invite everyone to go back and look at the March council meeting, I'm uh, sorry, March budget meetings, and you get to see, as Jonathan said, cutting $500,000 from, uh, as he did, and Councilman Freelander in the back did, and you get to see it. I invite everyone to do that. Uh, that's definitely the, uh, the kind of government that I want to be part of moving forward. Um, one thing that uh, is a, a personal note of mine is uh, about uh, getting permits in the town. Um, I've been uh, working on this one particular permit on my property for a few years now. It, it's actually gotten easier to know what I have to do to get through the permit process. One thing I think could be a little easier on the residents is not even the cost of permits, which usually are only a few hundred dollars, not bad, uh, but the cost of the documentation to get those permits, engineering costs, DEP costs. If, the res if a resident could know what that is in a few, it, uh, before starting, they'd be able to better budget for their time for their project. That's something I definitely want to look into. Um, uh, one thing that also needs to be done is the ordinances in this town have not been updated in quite some time. Uh, they're starting to. Uh, I know uh, Jonathan mentioned the Wawa about uh, the businesses that need, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, the Wawa uh, and also the, um, uh, also to update them to prevent OPMA violations because a few of those have happened and it's really been a legal mess for the town. Uh, those are starting to get better. We're just make sure we prevent them going forward. And uh, again, the needs assessment on the rec, not just uh, rec structures and uh, the fields, just to make sure, uh, and not just Peter Peterson Field, but also at all the all the fields all throughout town. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can. Uh, I'll be hanging out afterward. Uh, you can always just uh, give me a shout. Thank you very much. Speaker is Amy Colas. Hi, everybody. Hi. Amy Colas, Sagittarius. <laughs> um, thanks for having us here, and I promised that my parents that I would speak into the microphone and slowly. Um, I grew up in White Meadow. Um, my parents grew up in White Meadow. They met here. And it really is the land of milk and honey. If you consider the land of milk and honey a place where there's wonderful schools, beautiful land, safe land, we even have beaches, we have lakes, we have anything you could want. and. You can get into the college of your choice, and you can win a Nobel Prize. I haven't yet, but I could, because I grew up in Rockaway Township. And it's so important to me that Rockaway Township can, remains the same, that we have our great schools, we have great teachers and awesome schools, and I can't stress that enough. And I wanted to say that why. I want to really protect Rockaway Township so that all future generations kids now and in the future will always have the opportunities that I have. Um, so that's first, and it brings me into number two, having fiscal responsibility, which everybody has mentioned. Um, <clears throat> really has nothing to do with party, if you ask me. Um, I went to the University of North Carolina, which um, I said I had the college of my choice, and that's the, the number one. Um, at UNC, I remember when I got there and I saw um, signs for the Young Republicans Club. And I thought, isn't that an oxymoron? Because I really didn't know, leaving Rockaway Township, that anyone was Republican or Democrat. I mean, I kind of didn't even know now. I realized that we all had parties, but I didn't think it had anything to do with how this town was run. Because really, don't we want the same things? We want a safe place for our kids. We want clean air. 
we want great schools, we want fiscal responsibility, which, yes, I went to UNC, and then I got my MBA and my Master's of Health Administration. So it doesn't take an MBA to know that taxes really are based on money in versus money out. So what if we could think of some things that would bring money in by tapping into government programs that allowed us to use, to bring renewable energy programs so it would help the environment at the same time as bringing in money, lowering our tax dollars. And of course, we've all talked about the lawsuits, the frivolous lawsuits that are going to be no more. So lowering taxes, is it a possibility? Well, <coughs> we would all love it. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, so getting along has a lot to do with it, which brings me to my third reason that I, um, my big thing that I want to run about. I am a hardline anti-bullying person. No bullying for kids, adults, politicians. There's really no reason for any of us to have bullying in our lives. We've had some tragedies in this town and we need to really remember arguing bad. We need to all listen to one another. We all may have different ideas. We may have different opinions. But when we get together and discuss and negotiate, we probably will learn that we have more similarities, especially now. Um, what, a, what a good group after all the years that we've gone through turmoil. Um, it's nice to be a part of my ticket, which seems to be on this side. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and some of them are on this side. Um, there's the suits over there. Um, also, I have to mention, we have some women who are running now. Isn't it? W-O-M-A-N. Um, we do bring some different things, a lot of, um, a lot of good reasoning, um, a lot of intelligence, a lot of thoughtfulness, and we will really, you know, bring everybody under our, into our arms. And um, so basically in summary, um, I want to keep the town as beautiful as it always was and is and get us into the best schools and be kind and rule with, um, govern together with, in, a, in a spirit of community. And um, that's it, we're, we're all, our doors will always be open. Um, and we'll help with anything that we can. Thank you. And last but not least, Sari. And I'm not gonna try and say her last name because I'll massacre it. and I appreciate you guys toughing it out with everyone and staying to the end and hearing me as well. Uh, I want to give you a little background about myself because I understand that I'm a new face and I want you to get to know me. So I was born and raised in a town super, super far away. Yeah, no, it's four miles down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and I've basically been in this area my entire life. I went to Drew University to get my bachelor's in biology and then I continued on to County College in Morris, where I received my associate's in nursing. After I received my nursing license, I worked with newborns for a really long time, this sweet and wonderful world, and then I transitioned to an entirely different world of working in substance use and addiction. But while working in that first job, something else interesting happened to me. I reconnected with someone that I had a crush on since I was seven years old, as I worked on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as we got to spend a lot of time together, I got to see a lot more of Rockway, because that's where I live. And before we knew it, we made the decision to, you know, put down our own roots here and build our own home here in Rockway. And then I just kind of dove right into it and became part of the Rockway political scene. 
I joined the Rockway Township new leadership team as their publicity director first. And for several months, that's what I did. I inundated everyone on social media. That was me. <laughs> and when an opening came up, I was super, super excited to accept the position on the as candidate. What I would like to bring to council, I primarily and personally have two goals. The first is, uh, I look at a lot of things from a nursing perspective, and I kind of take a nursing approach with a lot of things in my life, which may be annoying for my boyfriend, but it's good, it's good. But I want to kind of bring that to council and to Rockaway in general, because a nurse at the center of care, they are responsible for facilitating communication between what seems like a million disciplines. And that's what I want to do with our council and our mayor and our board of education. One of my personal goals is to get the conversation moving forward so we can all aggressively attack bullying and find a way to move the conversation forward and facilitate getting lead into all of our schools so all our children, all our future children can have the best chance possible and so they're all well equipped for what's out there in the world. My other personal goal is that I think that there are so many different kinds of people here in Rockway. Different backgrounds, different cultures, so many things to be celebrated. But I think we can do a little bit of a better job with that. I would like to form a diversity and cultural awareness committee. So we can do that. We can celebrate all the parts of our community. And then everyone inside and outside looking in can look at Rockway as inclusive and welcoming to all and warm and loving. Because that's what we want to be. I appreciate your time. Again, thank you for organizing this. Thank you for toughing it out to the end. I hope I am waking up a little bit. I would love to shake your hand and I would love to get to know you more. And thank you for your time. Our next candidate is Joseph Jackson. Thank you, Pat. Uh, First, I'd like to thank Pat for organizing this. She puts in a lot of time. Uh, I'm an existing council member at large, and I don't think I've been to meeting that Pat's not at and Doug's not at. So I round of applause for them for all they do for the community. Um, I'll be running again uh, with my running mates, Howard Critz, existing councilwoman Mary Noon, Adam Salberg, and our current mayor, Mike Puzio. Um, I wish all the other candidates good luck in, in their positions that they're running for. I think, you know, what I'm looking at for Rockway Township, we're starting to bring the town back together, I believe, and I think we're going in the right direction. And I feel like what I bring to the table and what my running mates bring to the table are, are several things that are important. Um, number one, volunteerism, right? Being active in the community for a long time. I've done a lot of volunteer work. I was on the board of ed for almost 10 years, um, coaching youth sports for a long time, member of the citizen rec committee, uh, running the football program, I'm a Rutgers instructor for the town, and I'm a Meals on Wheels driver. Um, the council position is a volunteer position, let's be honest, and it's dedicating a lot of time and being put under the microscope constantly. Um, and so having that background and that experience to be able to handle that is important, I think, in the position. Um, number two, we're, you know people talk about taxes, everybody wants to save taxes, where are we going to save taxes? I think an important thing to look at, you know, everybody sees the, you know, Doug does a great job streaming the videos and putting them out there, and everybody sees what goes on in the meetings and the resolutions and the, the discussions back and forth and the bickering and all those things. But what it really comes down to is, you know, budget time. You know, how do, how do you look at the budget? How do you evaluate expenses month to month? And especially when contracts come up, you know, what do you do with the contracts? How are you going to handle the contracts with the unions? Well, I can tell you, I was on the board, when I was on the Board of Ed, I was a member of the Finance Committee, and I was a member of the Contract Negotiation Committee. So being able to find savings in negotiating contracts and reviewing finances is something I can bring to the table just from doing those things, but also from my background. Um, I've been in business since graduating college. I'm a manager um, at ADP. So understanding how a budget works and how you manage finances is important. And that's just the reality of the position because that's really where you're going to save the money. Oh, hey, Manny. You know, I was say, honey, Manny. Um, <laughs> so I think it's important that you know when you when you're looking for somebody to to represent you and and what your concerns are. You know, you need to have somebody that really understands how the government works and how how finances work and all those things. It's important. 
Um, and that's all I have to say. I will be here uh, the rest of the night if anybody has any questions. A lot going off. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple minutes back. I'm going to give you a couple minutes back, Pat. So thank you, everybody. Next speaker is Adam Selber. Good evening, everyone. Again, Pat, thank you so much for putting it all together. Doug, as always, thank you for the AV. You know, if you know anyone that doesn't believe that their vote matters, that the individual vote really has any effect, I strongly suggest you tell them to watch uh, Doug's videos from the last two years of council meetings. Um, we know just the impact of what the individual vote is, and that's really what we're out here for, is to talk to you folks about our individual visions, about how we want to give back to the state and our beloved town of Rockaway. You really are currently, Rockaway Township, at a crossroads right now. Uh, most of you have seen the power of individuals that can change things, power of individuals that make things worse, but also much better. But now you have a decision. We have Mayor Puzio in place, we have Council President Sackett, Council Vice President Jackson. But how do we lead the council? How do we fix what was broken? How do we move forward and bring it back to the town, which is desirable, profitable, safe, and the envy of Morris County? Well, I believe that I can bring to the table a lot of things that can do that. You know, I mentioned two years ago at the council meeting, so that's really also the time that I decided to step into this venue. Um, I saw what could be wrong as a uh, resident. I voiced my concerns. I spoke out. I got involved. Of course, with the passing of Mayor Datchison, I stepped up place my name in as interim mayor um, due to, I guess, the, um, I wouldn't say arrogance, but uh, the, the non-caring about laws, suddenly I was the interim mayor of Rockaway Township. Um, I was proud to do that. I was able to accomplish in the small time I was there what I set out to do. A lot of you remember this, is I just wanted to set this ship straight. I wanted to calm things down, center it, focus it, get us back on an action plan, and deliver on that. I feel I was able to do that and hand off a much more uh, somber town, I'd say, to, to Mayor Puzio. And something that I look back at that was really a turning point in my life. So that's what led me here, standing here right now today, was to, again, to step up and help my town. I'm not doing this for any type of agendas, vendettas, witch hunts. I want to do this because I've lived here my entire life since 1966. My family has been here since 1962. Fell in love with my wife, whose family goes back to the mining days, and I love Rockaway. And I don't believe that it's the Rockaway that I remember as in my youth. And I want to see that come back. How will I do that? By being part of a team. The Rockaway First Team. As I said before, you're at the crossroads. Who has the training, the education, the, the diligence to, to bring the town back to where it is? I'm fortunate enough to be on a team of business and civic leaders. Everyone who's going to give up their time with very, very busy schedules, all of us, but because we love the town and we want to contribute what we have to make it a better place for all of you. I truly believe that the Rockway First Team is capable of doing that. You know, during my day job, my entire life is surrounded by creating something for my 23 salespeople to deliver to their customers. Taking a vision, turning it into reality, making it profitable, valuable, and leaving their life a little better than before my, myself and my team saw them. That's what I do all day, that's what I've done for 30 years, that's what I've done the last 20 years as a sales manager, and that's what I want to do for Rockaway. I want to get involved with the entire council and of course the mayor, get us all together again as one solid team and work towards the common goal, create the action plan and deliver on that within a specific uh, timeline. I've heard a lot of your concerns out there. I know. Um, Again, the ball fields come to play a lot, the streets come to play a lot. These are all, again, these are things that should have been taken care of over the years, but haven't. So immediately, we have to take the priorities, we need to deliver on the promises that we made for you, and we need to do this in a specific time frame. Again, with a specific team, all going for the same goal, I know that we can accomplish that. Now, now please understand that just because I'm a member of a team, much like the teams I'm involved with uh, at work, we don't always agree. We all agree on the common goal. How we get there is, again, where each individual's talents, ideas, and visions come to play. So we all come together with your best interests at heart. So again, 
Uh, I had the opportunity to see Rockaway from the inside out as interim mayor. I've had the opportunity to, to be on a team of, of business and civic professionals. Now I'd like to take that and work for you. I hope that you'll vote for myself and my Rockaway First team on November 5th. Thank you. Next is Howard Chris. Good evening. My name is Howard Pritz and I'm running for the position of Council at Large. Uh, Pat, thank you for putting this on. I have an enormous sense of pride when I when I get to tell my family that I've been invited to speak here. And my son looks at me with a little bit of admiration and says, you know what, that's really cool. You think they'll have cookies again? <laughs> <laughs> I successfully ran in the primary on the Rockaway First ticket along with Mayor Puzio, Joe Jackson, and Adam Solberg. I want to thank you for your support. We're also very happy to have Mary New with us as part of the Rockaway First team now as well. My volunteerism has always been in recreation. I've been a director in the Rockets football and cheer program for many years now. In my tenure there, we've made the program into a real family-friendly environment by purchasing padded helmets for our flag players, expanding the food menu, improving the sound system, enhancing the scoreboard, refurbishing the announcer's booth, painting the midfield with a nice big new RT logo, and adding a 35 foot long inflatable tunnel and helmet that each Rocket player and cheerleader gets to run through before the game. We were able to do all this by fundraising at the program level without asking any parents for fundraising assistance. The program keeps growing and now Peterson is a destination during home games for friends and family to come and have fun. <coughs> I'm a senior manager with CVS in charge of online fulfillment. My job is to direct orders once they've been placed. I am responsible for overseeing a staff responsible for tens of thousands of orders placed daily to ensure they are filled correctly and completely from one of our 99 fulfillment centers spread out across the country and delivered on time at the lowest cost. I have extensive experience in retail management and fulfillment operations. It's my job to make sure that the best result is derived at the lowest cost and on time. I know how to get things accomplished in a challenging environment and I want to take that experience and translate it to our town's needs. I'm also the director for fifth and sixth grade boys basketball. I've coached football, wrestling, basketball, t-ball, and soccer. I love being extensively involved with our town rec programs, and I want to expand my volunteerism to our local government. I think that our taxes are too high. So say something like that, it's really easy, it makes a great cash line, it looks great on a sign, but the path to alleviating that burden is not as clear cut. <coughs> I have four young kids and I love living in Rockaway. I want to be able to afford living here and be able to give my family what they deserve, but at what cost? A large portion of our taxes go to education. Now, with four kids in the public school system, probably getting my money's worth, but is there an opportunity to reduce the taxes here? I can't in good faith promise that I will lower taxes. What I can promise is that I will work tirelessly with the administration and school districts and try to address any cost-saving opportunities. I'd like to have uh, a review of our budget to see how we can save money while keeping the same level of standards and services. I know Peterson Field has been a major topic of discussion for a long time. I'd like to work with the council and administration to address the needed upgrades and repairs there sooner rather than later. I know extensive work has been done regarding uh, the Peterson improvements. Uh, I'd like to work with the engineers and see how we can address the opportunities to better our facilities, most importantly at a reasonable cost. I think very highly of uh, Mr. Sackett and the team he's assembled, but what they're offering is what Mayor Puzio has already begun. As part of the mayor's team, I will be in a position to help the current administration continue the work that they've already started. We're at a crossroads. There's no need to rehash the drama that's gripped us the past two years. But we've already started back on the path of progress and I want to continue that work for you. I'm sick and tired of local politics being a spectator sport. I'm tired of the mudslinging, I'm tired of the name calling, both on Facebook and forums and even in the council meetings. I want to restore dignity and your faith 
in local government, but to do that, we need people aligned with our mayor's vision. If elected, I will deliver on my promise not to just comprehensively review cost-saving opportunities in an attempt to reduce our taxes, but to start rebuilding your faith in your community and truly putting Rockaway first. My name is Howard Kritz, and I'm running for council. The next speaker will be uh, James J. Gannon, who's running for Morris County Sheriff. Good evening. My name is Jim Gannon, and I'm your Morris County Sheriff. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for putting this on today and having everyone here. I think it's a wonderful thing. We've been here before during the primary, and I think it's great. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, in politics, people talk about the negative. You know? I, I see there's a lot of positive uh, with regards to all of that. Uh, certainly, uh, being the Morris County Sheriff has been um, I finished up my first term, it's been the honor of a lifetime. You know, I'm a career police officer, having been a police officer in neighboring town of Booton Township and, and Booton, and I was a career officer in the Morris County Prosecutor's Office where I retired as Deputy Chief of Detectives there uh, after 22 years. And I went on to the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force at the time, and then I went into private sector. Uh, and I sent the ranks at Novartis, the drug company, uh, to being the global head of security risk. So I really had great opportunity um, that's really prepared me for the job as Morris County Sheriff, you know, uh, about 36 years of experience, um, following the footsteps of my father, who was a New York City police detective. Um, so, you know, here I am the sheriff for the last three years in Morris County, and my focus has been on uh, keeping people and neighborhoods safe which we should all do, right, with the local police department, with the county prosecutor's office, respecting the rule of law and the Constitution, uh, and extending a hand of compassion to people uh, in times of need. Uh, we, you know, I'll talk about it, we've seen a big drug problem uh, throughout Morris County. I would suggest to you it's, it's a, more of a pandemic than an epidemic. It's really affecting all people. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot of those values as a beat cop walking to beat in Putin, where you really uh, were with people day in and day out. People who lived in the neighborhood, uh, store owners, those types of things, and children. It's really served me well. Aside from being uh, a dad, you know, I was with my daughter today and, and a pappy to uh, a three-year-old and a, and a 12-week-old, 11-week-old girl. Um, it's been the opportunity of a lifetime being your Morris County Sheriff. So you've probably seen in the news some of the things we've been doing in the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I think the biggest thing you've probably seen is Hope One. Hope One is a mobile access recovery vehicle that goes out into the community and helps people with uh, mental health issues and addiction issues. Uh, we went out, we have a vehicle bringing services to people in the at-risk populations, you know. There's about 388 documented homeless in Morris County. We focus on people without support. So uh, we've been out there. Uh, never in my wildest dreams would I have believed that uh, we have, would have been out about 350 times so far with mental health professionals, addiction specialists, and the sheriff's officers in <coughs> civilian clothes. Um, about 9,000 people have approached us and needed some information on opioid addiction and mental health. Um, about 270 people have been direct placements uh, for mental health programs or addiction programs from the street. This is cold call. If you're in sales, this is like cold call. You know, uh, we've trained about 2,000 people in the use of Narcan. We can document 37 times where people have used that Narcan to bring people back, and there's a lot of stories out there with regards to it. Now, Hope One is in Monmouth County, Cape May County, Burlington County. It's turning on in Jersey City and the big city of Newark, Hope One Newark. So it's out there in the community. It's a model that's being recognized uh, in about two weeks out in Chicago where we received first place in the private-public partnership uh, from the International Association of Chiefs of Police. And the list goes on with addiction. RSVP, Responsible School Violence Prevention. You may have seen the Daily Record uh, last week. There was a press conference with regards to an app we developed so that students and, and people could report suspicious behavior before something happened in schools. We've also taught curriculum in schools with mental health professionals, police officers, and educators to spot behavior that was potentially problematic. 
um, to return children to the chemistry class, return them back to the ball field. You know, but some children uh, may be having some difficulties that we can assist before something uh, goes bad. Um, we've been spending a lot of time at our houses of worship in Morris County. There's 317 houses of worship. Uh, there's 34 for the Jewish people. And uh, the Jewish people have been subjected to more terrorism and violence than any other group. And uh, we spent a lot of time during the High Holy Days at synagogues, temples, or churches. Uh, so uh, just some of the things that we're doing. But it's been a great opportunity over the last three years to be your Morris County Sheriff. I look forward to another three years. I look forward to your vote. On November 5th, if anybody has any questions, come see me at the courthouse or I'll be around for a little bit. Okay, God bless you and thanks very much for your time. Our next speaker is William Stavella. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience for staying through some tremendous speakers, listening about ideas. Thank you for coming here tonight, on a night when everyone's busy, to hear about the future of your government. Thank you to Doug for live streaming it. I know that, uh, I know firsthand, the Rockaway YouTube channel has become quite the uh, thing that we follow in our cars, going places. So, my name is Bill Chevelle. I've lived here in your town for 20 years. Rockaway Township is my home. Rockaway Township is a wonderful place. I think we all agree on one thing. All of the people behind me, regardless of what party you're in, regardless of what office you're seeking. So I started my career 30 years ago. I had a very unglamorous position as a correction officer in a state prison. Walking in and beat inside of cells with dangerous men and women. I left there and I became a New Jersey State Parole Officer where I learned a lot about addiction, people in crisis, reintegration to the community. Sometimes people need a break. Sometimes people need to go into treatment. Sometimes people need to go back to jail because they present a risk to you. I left there and was invited to become the Deputy Chief of the Morris County Prosecutor's Office in 2007 by then Prosecutor Robert Bianchi. When I came to the Prosecutor's Office, we were able to transform it and make it a more modern organization. We cut a bloated command staff down in the five years that we were there, reducing the number of high-level investigative positions there and reinvesting the money in the bottom with assistant prosecutors to prosecute cases detectives. We cut $4 million in operation budgets by limiting the amount of fuel that detectives used in the car. We created a community affairs unit that had never existed before to go out and ring everyone's doorbell. All of the fates and communities in all the corners of Morris County that before had not seen the prosecutor's office until there was a time. We had the first, he's, he's no longer with us, he was a dear friend, but we had the first critical infrastructure coordinator that created the system that we have now today and where Houses of worship and schools were evaluated for risk to make sure that they were safe against terrorists, against people who are here to do harm. In 2009, I became the chief of detectives in the prosecutor's office. After that, I had the honor of being the president of the Prosecutor's Chiefs Association of all 21 counties, where I was able to be a part on a statewide level moving the future of law enforcement. I was given the opportunity under former Sheriff Edward Rochford to serve as an undersheriff with your mayor, Mike Puzio. We were undersheriffs together. We led the day-to-day -day operations of the sheriff's office. Here in Rockaway Township, I served as a councilman. I was honored to be an at-large councilman elected and re-elected. I was your deputy emergency management coordinator on 9-11. I was here in your municipal building trying to figure out what to do with the school children from Picatinny Arsenal. That the arsenal was locked down. They were in St. Clement's Church, my parish. I was the director of your police athletic league here in Rockaway Township, finding programs for children. So I'm not going to go on and on because you've heard from me before. I've been in your neighborhoods here for the summer, certainly, but 20 years. So what, what are we going to do in my vision in the sheriff's office? Well, one of the things is we're going to bring an evidence-based drug prevention program to stop children from becoming addicted to drugs before it happens. Rockaway Township is a success story. We brought lead, we worked with Rockaway Township, lead, law enforcement against drugs, to bring it here to stop children from using drugs. We're going to use retired police officers to be cost effective, to provide non-law enforcement programs in the sheriff's office, to save money. We're going to bring crisis intervention training. It's a very successful program that Bergen County, Passaic County, Essex County has, that gives police officers more tools in their toolbox to deal with mentally ill people, to make decisions about people who are in crisis. As someone else said, we talked about millennials. 
well, we're going to increase technology. We know that people like myself, we read newspapers, we go on websites. The younger generation, everything's on a phone app. We should have an app that not just to use in times of crisis, but an app to access everything in the sheriff's office. The next generation that comes, overwhelmingly, is governed by the iPhone. And that's just the generations to come. I'm not going to keep you anymore. I'll be here to answer your questions. I ask for your vote to be the honor of your next Morris County Sheriff, and I thank you for having me. Next speaker is Michael Thompson. Thank you, Pat. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, Doug. So I'm Michael Thompson. I'm from Mendham Township. I'm a husband and a father. I'm a trust in the state's attorney. I've been here for over 20 years. And I'm running this year for Morris County Surrogate. And when you're running for Morris County Surrogate, or surrogate generally, part of what you do is explain what the surrogate is. Uh, the county surrogate is the uh, counts, uh, constitutional office. Uh, there's one in each of the 21 counties, primarily responsible for the administration of estates. So when someone passes away, the will is brought to the surrogate's court and the executor is appointed. Uh, where there is no will, an administrator is, is appointed. The surrogate's court also plays a role in uh, adoptions, uh, in contested estates, and the appointment of guardians. What I often say is that the surrogate is the office utilized by county residents on what might be one of the worst days of their, of their lives. I've been a trust in the state's attorney for over 20 years. Uh, I've helped over 500 families through the surrogate's court process in my career. I've drafted over a thousand wills and trusts. I've drafted hundreds of special needs trusts to protect children and to protect seniors. I've been doing this work for, for over 20 years. Uh, so I've grown up uh, uh, in New Jersey. I'm a Jersey guy. Uh, but I was born in Alabama. I was born on the Army base, Redstone Arsenal. I was born in an Army hospital. Uh, my mom still has uh, the receipt. My birth was $7.42. <laughs> uh, I was born in an Army hospital because my father joined the Army during Vietnam, and he served in Vietnam. Uh, and he joined not necessarily because he was gung-ho in the war. He joined because he wanted to have some control uh, over his destiny. So he served in Vietnam and finished his tour uh, in Alabama. Uh, my parents' experience in the 60s in the Vietnam era instilled in them a certain skepticism of government. Uh, you know, my father was not, to quote the song of the time, he was not a fortunate son. Um, you know, he, did not have the money to go to college and get a deferment, and didn't have the money to have a doctor to write a letter to say he had bone spurs to get out of serving. My father wasn't a fortunate son, but I am. My parents' experience uh, instilled in me that sense of skepticism, yes, but also uh, a, a love of learning and a sense of compassion, which has served me well for 20 years as a trust in the state's attorney, and will serve me well as your next surrogate. So, I'm running for county surrogate this year so that when you go through the doors of the surrogate's court on what may be one of the worst days of your life, you're going to know that the surrogate is well trained, is there for the right reasons. And that's what we should demand uh, from our government at all levels, from local to Morristown to Trenton to Washington. And that's why I'm running, and that's why I'm asking for your vote on November 5th. Thank you. Next we have Heather Darling. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming out and for giving us the time. I, I really appreciate it. Pat, thank you for putting this together. Uh, Doug, I hope you don't mind if I move around a little bit up here. Um, I want to tell you guys how I came to be standing before you tonight. So I've been a Morris County resident for 45 years. And I've been involved in community <coughs> service for the last 30 years since volunteering right after high school at Wellkind Rehabilitation Facility, which is now Kessler over in Chester. Um, I currently live in Roxbury. I've been involved in the community there in community service for, again, 30 years. I've been on zoning. I've been on economic development, rotary. 
Chamber of Commerce um, in Unico uh, with Mike Puzio and Bill Chavella in Italian American Police Society of New Jersey with these gentlemen. So not only am I part of the Roxbury community, I'm part of your community through association as well. Many of you I've known for many years and uh, I'm, I'm proud to call you my neighbors and my friends. Um, community service brought me to running for the freeholder board. I'm currently one of your Morris County freeholders and um, <coughs> as you heard freeholder Master Angelo say, we've actually done a considerable amount um, even in the, the short time that I've been there on the board. Um, when I ran for freeholder, I ran to continue my community service background, my community service record, and help the community, further the community that I grew up in and better it, because I think we leave things better than we found it. That's what we're here to do. Um, I had no idea that our current surrogate, John Pecoraro, would be retiring after 25 years in office, and he did. He announced his retirement, and I thought, this is a perfect fit, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my background now and why I think that's the perfect fit for me. Because not only am I an attorney that practices general practice, including estates and trusts, for over 15 years, I'm a small business owner. I built that business from the ground up on the heels of my father's death when I was 32 years old. When I was five, I lost my mom to melanoma. I was raised by one parent who was a senior by the time I was 10 years old. I made decisions at 20, at 27, and again at 32 that I wish on none of you. But the, the ones that I made at the time that I was 32 were because my father was in intensive care in Morristown Memorial. And it was after a surgery <coughs> that should have ended his life or continued his life in a positive direction. He never expected when he made the decision to undertake this voluntary procedure, um, he had two choices, it was voluntary, it, neither was good, but um, he never knew that he would spend three weeks in ICU, and I never knew the decisions that I would have to make. So there I was, no mom, no brothers, no sisters, doing this. After that, after three horrible weeks, I was in the surrogate's office. I had passed the bar. My passing results were in the mail when I came home from my father's funeral. So here I am with no experience in law, just a law degree and my bar results, and I'm probating an estate. And I did that in the Morris County Surrogate's Office. So I've experienced it in a way as a practitioner and as a person who's been in some of the worst positions you ever want to find yourself in in that office. So I know what it's like from both sides. I know what it needs and I know how to make it better. We have millennials dealing with that office now, and that office deals in microfiche. We need to bring it current. You heard from the mayor talking about his son. We have kids with special needs. Their parents don't know that they need a guardianship when that kid becomes an adult, so that that parent can still advocate on that child's behalf. People don't know that this resource is there for them until it becomes a need and they go looking for it. As a freeholder, I have been out in the community every day, every night, not just while I'm running, but literally every day, every night, for approximately five years, even before I was running, speaking to people about the services that we have here in our community, in our county, that are available to you. I intend to do the same as the surrogate. People talk about going out to groups and what they're going to do. I've been talking to senior groups. Every time I talk to an organization in this county that deals with children with special needs, I talk to them about how, as surrogate, I can get in touch with the parents and let them know about the resources that are going to be available for them. This is an absolute passion and destiny has brought me here, and I ask for your vote on November 5th for Heather Darling for Morris County Surrogate. Thank you. Our next speaker is going to be Thomas Mastry Angelo. Did I say it right? You said it pretty well. I, I mean, I get a lot of variations, but that was a what that was one of the okay. better ones. Thank you. Good, e good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, giving us a few minutes uh, tonight. I want to thank uh, the organizers of this uh, 
of this evening to uh, you know actually see uh, see our system in progress here. So uh, uh, I want to thank you again. Um, so I'm Tom Mastrangelo, Morris County Freeholder. I'm running for my fourth term as Freeholder. Uh, I, I come from uh, Montville, New Jersey. Uh, married to my beautiful wife, Debbie. I have three beautiful children. I have a grandchild, Adriana, who's three months old. And uh, as, as Jimmy knows what I'm gonna say, my dog, Bentley. Okay. <laughs> um, since, uh, since being on the board, and, and I'm running with, uh, let me just say it, I'm running with uh, my, my two running mates. This is the third time we're running together. Uh, Doug Caban and Kathy DiFilippo. Uh, both Kathy and Doug uh, had, had engagements tonight that we're pre-committed to, so I'm here to represent the team and represent our record. Um, we, we've, we've, we've taken a lot of time and effort over the last number of years to deliver good government to Morris County. Uh, and and what, what that means as far as good government, government is uh, uh, keeping taxes in line. There are actually, and you'll see in the literature that I hand out this evening, there's actually uh, three years of no tax increases, which started when I was director of the board. Now, that, that's great when there's no tax increases, but you still have to deliver the services. Well, guess what? We were able to deliver the services, and not only deliver the services on a consistent basis, as far as the level that the Marsh County residents were, are used to receiving, we were able to deliver the services in regards to our roads, for instance. Uh, we, uh, over the last several years, we've been able to double the amount of roads uh, that, that we had delivered. We used to deliver 17 miles a year. We're up to approximately 30 to 34 miles, uh, depending on the year. Um, from a, from a uh, uh, law and public safety standpoint, you, 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 heard, you heard our sheriff. Uh, I'm the liaison for law and public safety. And it, you know, I gotta tell you, it's been quite a pleasure to work with uh, Sheriff Jim Gannon. Uh, we, 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 we've worked together uh, on the initiatives that the, the sheriff has had the vision uh, to, to, to implement and to implement those uh, to implement those services that he just described there has to be a funding mechanism and we were able to fund uh, uh, several of those uh, uh, services that the sheriff talked about and the reason why we fund these things is because of quality of life if you look at Morris County Morris County uh, is number one, one of the top counties in the country to live, work, and raise a family. Number two, it is in the top 43 counties in the United States as far as one of the best fiscally managed counties. There's 3,000 counties, there's only 43 counties who've earned the distinction of being the top fiscally managed, and we're in that upper tier. Uh, and, and, and to do that, us freeholders, have to take our um, have to take our know-how. Have to take. I'm a businessman. I've been a businessman all my life. Well, most most of my life after college. Um, but take take our, our personal experience. Take take our know-how and apply to government and to make government work better for its people. And as as I say to everybody, I'm a taxpayer just like you. I, I have a job. I have a wife, you heard, I have a dog, Bentley, okay? Um, I've gotta go out and work every day, okay? And I don't like taxes, but I like a good quality of life. And in order to do that, uh, we've been able, you know, I've been able to work real hard to deliver that quality of life here in Morris County. Um, if you look at, you know, I mentioned roads and bridges before. We've got over a thousand bridges and aqueducts in this county. And we've got a big county of 39 towns. Those, those aqueducts, those bridges have to be maintained. Our health and human services, second to none. In, in 21 counties uh, in this state, we, we, we have a great organization. It is the number one funded organization in services in Morris County. When you look at the pie of where the money's going, human services gets, gets uh, the, the larger chunk. I mean, it gets a pretty big chunk. Law and public safety, which includes the sheriff, includes uh, uh, the prosecutor's office, uh, is the second largest uh, receiver of tax dollars. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're here running again because we believe in what we're doing. And I'm here to ask for your vote for me, Doug and Kathy. And we hope, uh, uh, we hope we see you on election day. And thank you.
Michael. Okay, I might murder another name. Uh, David Timpanero. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dave Timpanero, and I am running for Morris County Freeholder. I want to thank you all for being here. Pat, thank you so much for putting this together and inviting us here. Uh, to be able to come and speak to everybody. I really appreciate that. So I, uh, I came from about 20 minutes down the road in Randolph, New Jersey. That's where I live right now with uh, my beautiful and supportive wife and my six-year-old son. And, uh, and I say supportive because running for office is not, is not an easy thing to do. Right? People typically run for office for a couple of different reasons. My reason is because it's time for somebody to step up to the plate. And uh, I happen to be one of those people. And it's not an easy thing to be able to do. But it is when you look at the why, right? And where I grew up, I want to take you back a little bit to who I am, so you understand where I came from to what I want to do. So I, I didn't grow up out here. I grew up in Hudson County. I grew up in Bayonne. And I grew up in public housing. My mom raised me. It was me, my three siblings, and my mom. Five people in a two-bedroom apartment. And uh, they call them apartments, but you can hear your neighbors sneeze, say, God bless you. And uh, they rush to call them togetherments. But uh, that's where I grew up, that's where I was at, and I learned a lot growing up at a young age, right? And uh, growing up in public housing, you know, where I grew up, you learn things quick, you grow up quick, and what I learned is how to defend myself, how to protect my family, and also stand up for my community. So I've carried that on through, the, through my life, my upbringing. I've learned how to be the strongest man I am today by being raised by the strongest woman I know in my life, and that's my mom. And that's how I've become who I am today. And I want to share a little bit about that with you. So as I've grown up and I've come through life, I've taken those lessons with me. I've gone through, graduated from Rutgers University with a degree in psychology. I knew from about 12, 13 years old, probably adolescent age, that I wanted to work with children like me. I didn't know what it was called. I mean, I was 12. I was still getting in trouble and getting detention, right? But I knew I wanted to help kids like me. I just didn't know what it was called. So I followed my education, I followed my career all the way through. Um, got my degree from Rutgers University, got my master's degree from Capella University, and uh, I'm approximately six months away from being uh, a doctor and having my PhD in multidisciplinary human services. And uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so, but where I've come in my life to where I'm at today, you know, there's an old saying, you wanna pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That's what I've been taught and that's what I've done my entire life. And I learned that, you know, I've got deep roots in my family, and I, I hold a lot of pride. I'm, my last name is Tippenauer, but my mom's maiden name is Donovan. And um, my, cousin, my, my uncle is Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan was the Secretary of Labor for Ronald Reagan. He was the first Secretary of Labor. And uh, that runs deep in us to be able to pick yourselves up and do something with it. We were a third generation growing up in that public housing building I grew up in. Ray Donovan grew up in the same public housing. My nan and my pop who was a World War II Purple Heart recipient. But we've worked our way through it. What I want to do right now, I've spent my entire career working with children with developmental disabilities, behavioral challenges, substance abuse issues, kids that have been in and out of the juvenile detention center. Because of the programs that I've worked with and have been a part of, we use a model called the wraparound model. In the state of New Jersey, I think five juvenile detention centers have closed over the course of the last couple of years, or the last several years. In part because of the work we do in collaboration with the courts, and the children's system of care. And that's the part of the system that I work with. What I want to do is be a voice for the people. I've spent my entire career, most of my life, giving a voice to those who have otherwise either been silenced or ignored. I'm tired of being one of those people. This puts me here in front of you. They say follow the money. I got a phone call about two years ago asking me to be part of the uh, MAC committee in Randolph, New Jersey. I accepted. The next words disappointed me. What I was told on that phone call was, Dave, if you want to do anything in this town, you have to join the Randolph Republican Club. Now, I got to tell you, maybe I'm naive, but I don't think any township should be run by any particular party. No township, not any county, and not any state. So I started to do a little bit of research, and I started to do just that, follow the money. See, I live on a county road. I live on Quaker Church Road. That road has not been paved since, I don't know, the 90s? Right? I put on, a, I, I spoke to the county engineer where had it relined so that my family was no longer put in danger and the people that lived around that same intersection. 
and now they're going to supposedly repave the roads. Now here's the deal. I did this as a civilian, somebody, a resident, who lives in Morris County on a road that was bothered by a lot of things. My house rocks when these trucks pass me, right? But as a civilian, as a resident, I was able to be able to connect with the county and have those lines repainted to help make that intersection somewhat safe. Imagine what I could do if I bring your voice as an actual freeholder. My goal is to do just that. I'm not interested in partisan politics. I'm not interested, I'm, I'm not interested in gaining a contract in another municipality and collecting pension over pension over pension. I'm not going to take my freeholder minimal salary and then try to become a municipal something or other. I'm there to work for you. I work for children with disabilities and their families and I'll continue to do that. I'm not looking for a payday and an end. What I ask you to do is do your research, look who you vote for, look for our names on the ballot. My name is David Cipanero. I'm running with Karen Parmigiani and Carrie Marrow, and we look forward to your vote and serving you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Kara Parmigiani. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's an honor and a privilege. My name is Kara Parvajani, and yes, it is like the cheese. I have to tell you so you don't tell me. And since we're on the subject of dogs, my dog is Pesto Parmigiani, so yes. <laughs> I was born and raised here in Morris County. I'm a third generation small business owner. Uh, I'm married and I have a 10 month old baby girl that I don't put to sleep at night because I'm out here because this is more important because Morris County is important and moving Morris County forward is important. I'm an attorney and I represent people who don't have a voice. I represent, I'm a general practitioner and I'm proud to represent everyday people, every day with everyday problems and really that's what the Freeholder Board is about. I also represent children in court and patients in psychiatric facilities throughout the state of New Jersey and I understand what mental health is like here. I understand what the drug and opioid addiction situation is like. I, as a law clerk, worked on drug court and I continue to work with the Alumni Association of the Morris County Drug Court. I sit on an affordable housing committee in Mountain Lakes as a volunteer uh, because I understand how important affordable housing here is in Morris County and that 50% of people who work, live in Morris County don't even work in Morris County and we can do more to change that. I'm all about making sure that our County residents are able to live, work, and play in Morris County. You heard from Freeholder Mastrangelo how they didn't increase taxes this year. But if you actually just even Google Morris County budget 2019, and I was at that meeting, I encourage you to go to meetings. It shows that their taxes actually, your county taxes went up $11 on average. And although that may not seem like much to you, it does go up every year. But you know what doesn't change? is taxes, it not only is taxes, but also your infrastructure. You heard about paving the roads and improving bridges, and I've driven through most of this county, and I can attest to the fact there isn't very much change in that happening, but there's no plan for improving our traffic nightmare that's here in Morris County every single day. We have uh, problems not only at the state level for the roads, but also your county level and your town level. And without your county level working together, with your federal and your local level, things don't get done and you sit in traffic and things haven't improved. And I've lived here long enough to know that. I have been endorsed by the Transport Workers Union because they also feel strongly about the uh, traffic infrastructure nightmare here in Morris County and we want to do more than just talk about it, we want to actually move it forward and paving isn't the only answer to doing that. You heard from Laura Forgang how our Votech school turns away two out of every three applicants when college is so expensive to, right now. And the trade jobs are a great pathway towards development. And what you're gonna find is as Morris County develops is that we're going to be developing in two major ways, uh, in technology and also in jobs that don't require a college degree. And when we're turning away students who can be educated in a way that doesn't require a college degree, we're shutting doors now for more of our residents. So not only uh, is affordability a problem that shuts doors for people here in Morris County, but now also uh, being qualified for jobs here in Morris County. Um, Lake Hapatcong isn't an accident. It happened over time. We've had the same people in positions of power now in the Freeholder Board for 46 years, unbroken until Doug Romain. And at times they talk about how they've reduced the deficit that they caused. 
because they've been in power for 46 years. And again, we're here to change that. We're actually here to do more. And when the people of Lake Capacon came to the freeholder board and they said, the DEP isn't helping us, the EPA isn't helping us, if only we could get, and I was at that meeting myself, but I was sitting on the sideline and I could do nothing at the time. But when they came to complain, they didn't get help. And now, as you heard, it's $4 million to clean up because again, we're doing nothing. We have to do more here in Morris County to move everybody forward. And believe me, if this were getting done, I wouldn't, I'd be at home with my baby girl, putting her to bed. But I'm not, I'm here with you. And so what I need from you is for you to come out to the polls this November 5th. My name is Kara Parmigiani, and I need you to vote for me and my team, Dave Timpanero, Carrie Amaro, uh, and our sheriff candidate, Bill Schiavella, and Michael Thompson, and all of your local candidates to try and do more in Morris County than talk about problems. Let's change them. Thank you. Next speaker is Carrie Amaro. Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Amaro and I'm running for a Morris County Freeholder. I have, I've lived in Randolph for the past 15 years with my two wonderful children. And the reason why I have decided to run for freeholders essentially because of them. I've been a single mom for 21 years. I have my master's in accounting. I've worked as a controller for 13 years. And with the past presidential election and the treatment of women, the disrespecting of people, I couldn't let my kids not, I could not show my children that next lesson in life. You teach your children lessons throughout all, all stages of their life. And I could not let that lesson of standing up for people when they don't have a voice or they're being disrespected at the time in their life where they are learning to be young adults. I couldn't let that pass me by. My, I don't know if you guys remember when you were in your 20s. I know you do, I know I do. And I felt like I could take on the world. I felt like I could make a difference. And with everything that happened a few years ago, I saw my children kind of not know if that was really the case. And that's why I'm standing here in front of you today. I have my, I work in private industry for the most of my life, adult life. And I, um, and I have looked at operational efficiencies. I have looked at controls. I have looked at internal, I have looked at integrity within management. I looked at proper costing, and that's what I want to bring to the freeholder board. I feel like that's what we lack. It's one thing to say that you have a budget that ties, but it's one thing to say that you use your money efficiently. We all know how it is to live on a budget. We all know what it is to say I have, a th um, let's say, $3,000 for a month of expenses. But you can either buy a Mercedes with that, or, and spend uh, $800 for a car payment or use that money for groceries, for your children's programs, for clothing, for things that, are, that make life worth living and fun. And that's what I'm looking to make sure that we're doing with our budget. There's a lot of things that are hidden in the freeholder budget in, for Morris County, and it's my job as a freeholder and that seven C board team to look and make sure we find efficiencies for you. Because at the end of the day, we all here are for you. We all here should represent you and make sure that we have your back because that is our job and that's why we're standing here for you. Finally, on the freeholder board, not only is there a financial aspect to it, but there's also a human decency aspect to it. I've been to a few of the meetings, and quite frankly, I'm not impressed with the way that they treat constituents that go there to voice a concern. I feel like it's they're, they're condescending, and I don't feel like people should be treated that way. I feel that people should have their voice heard, and that's what I feel that my wonderful slate Kara Parmigiani and Dave Tempanaro bring to the table along with myself. At one meeting that I went to, there was a gentleman who, he was 89 years old, he was a veteran, and he wasn't there to speak to the freeholder board. He was essentially, because I guess he'd been there multiple times, he was there to speak to us, the room. And he just wanted someone to hear him, someone to help him get help. 
someone to help him get help because he was having difficulties with getting an appointment. And I had to actually leave that freeholder session and, and go home because my grandfather was in World War II. He was one of the 100 survivors of Burma. And if my grandfather was standing there and was treated that way, I would have had a huge issue. And that's why I'm running. Because not only do we have to have fiscal responsibility, not only do we have to protect our elderly, we also have to protect our youth. We have a Voltec, my, my daughter is 25. She's graduated from Montclair State. She went to Voltec school. My son went to Randolph High School. And I, and I know what the benefits of our high schools and what our Voltec schools and our state colleges and what we offer in New Jersey. And I ask every one of you, along with everyone else running here, to be accountable, to share, uh, share knowledge, share resources, share, share what we can do as a group to reduce taxes. Because the fact of the matter is, everybody can talk about reducing taxes. We have to streamline costs. We have to say, okay, we have a Voltec school, we have a wonderful board, we have wonderful board of ed candidates all over the county. Why can't we share what, what the Voltec school does with our, with our local schools? Why can't we communicate with each other? Why can't local government communicate with county government? Thank you. Um, so that, one well, last thing and then I'll, I'll go. Um, to, so that we can reduce costs and learn from each other and make our community all the better. Thank you. The first candidate um, is Betty Lou Ducrote. Unfortunately, she couldn't be with us. So she sent Aurora Dunn to, um, to give a little talk regarding um, Betty Lou. Unfortunately, she couldn't come. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And little ladies and gentlemen. It's awesome that you're here on school night part of Civics 101, so kudos to you. And my name is Aura Dunn. I have an honor to speak for Assemblywoman Betty Linda Cross, and I will be reading her statement. Uh, I'm not going to try to impersonate her voice or anything like that, so I do apologize to be reading through, but hopefully it's what her passion uh, is what comes through in this letter. My name is Aura Dunn. I'm honored to be here. Assemblywoman Ducros apologizes. She was unable to attend for a previous commitment that she was unable to get out of. Thank you everyone for making tonight possible. I truly regret not being able to deliver these remarks in person. It is an honor to serve the people of Morris, Essex, and Passaic counties as your Assemblywoman. While we are certainly a diverse community in New Jersey, we all share many of the basic concerns about the quality of life we want to maintain and achieve. We want quality schools. We want our children to develop, in successful, uh, into, to develop into successful and responsible adults. We want a clean environment. And we want to find solutions to the financial pressures we all face. New Jersey has become increasingly unaffordable. Taxes keep rising, and we all struggle to keep our friends and families together as we live and work in the state. As your Assemblywoman, I have been fighting to make New Jersey more affordable, and I have earned a strong reputation for working in a bipartisan manner. A good idea is a good idea whether it comes from someone who carries the label of Republican, Democrat, or Independent. I have never let party politics stop me from doing my job representing your concerns in Trenton. That is why my re-election has been endorsed by such, a diverse, such diverse groups as the small business owners of the National Federation of Independent Business, the working men and women at Local 825, the International Union of Engineers, our teachers at the New Jersey Education Association, and the brave law enforcement officers at the New Jersey Policemen's Benevolent Association. They know that in this polarized political atmosphere, I have not lost sight of what is important in New Jersey. For example, 
Before the recent vaping deaths that garnered national attention this past summer, I introduced legislation to further protect our children from electronic smoking devices by closing a loophole in our laws. People under 21 are not permitted to purchase these harmful products, but nothing in the law bans them from possessing and using the devices. I also have introduced legislation to protect our children from those using social media and the internet to market this junk to our young people, along with other negative influences such as video games. In the area of education, I am pushing Governor Murphy to authorize an audit of the nearly $28 billion in state, federal, and local dollars spent each year on education in New Jersey. School costs are by far the largest drain of property taxes, particularly in our region, and we must end the duplication of services, expenses, and purchases so our children benefit from every dollar we spend on our schools. We need transparency and accountability, especially at the school's development authority, which I want to put under the control of the Department of Treasury under legislation I introduced. This agency is supposed to be building schools in low-income districts, but it has wasted millions in tax dollars instead. These probes found that more than 30 tenured staffers were fired in the past two years and replaced by political cronies who were unqualified for their jobs and given salaries well above the levels of even executives in state government. This patronage hiring increased the authority's budget by $2 million, which the state can ill afford since the authority sticks taxpayers with a billion dollar debt annually. My plan would make the SDA more accountable, bring salaries in line with other state offices, and force the SDA to use transparent line item budgeting. Also this year, well before the harmful algal blooms hit our lakes in New Jersey, I introduced measures to help Greenwood Lake and Lake Apacon get the funding necessary to address the state's neglect of our waterways. I will, yes. Okay. So, the list continues of the great Assemblywoman's accomplishments and service to you, again, people over party. New Jersey would certainly be problem, would be problem free if raising taxes offered real solution. It doesn't, and this is where I will not join the majority of legislators in Trenton. Assemblywoman opposes this reckless spending, along with the 16 bills rammed through under government Governor Murphy, and she will continue to be your voice in Trenton, your watchdog. So Betty Lou, thanks you for your support and for allowing me and her to speak on her behalf tonight and the opportunity to address you. <coughs> Hope you all have a good evening, enjoy listening to the speeches, and don't forget to remember to cast your vote for Assemblywoman DeCrose, November 5th. Thank you. Our next speaker is Christina Clark. Hey everybody, how y'all doing tonight? Can you hear me? Because I'm not really a podium person. Thank you, Kat, for putting this together. I'm sorry, Doug, that I'm making you move your camera. Thank you to everybody who stepped up to public service and decided to run. Real quick, before we get started, I want to congratulate Assemblyman Weber on the birth of his daughter tonight. That's amazing. Um, we just celebrated the birth of my son yesterday. He's four now. But, you know, I know how precious it is to have that new little one. So I hope his family has a great time bonding together. And I want to thank my friend Anne Marie Principe for joining me. She has been an instrumental figure in making sure that the Victims Compensation Fund was passed at the federal level to make sure that we're doing right by our World Trade Center heroes. So thank you, Anne Marie, for your service. My political director who for some reason puts up with me. Um, my name is Christine Clark. I'm an environmental advocate, I'm a grassroots organizer, I'm a mother of four, and I'm running for state assembly in the New Jersey's 26th district uh, to advance clean energy jobs, protect clean air and water, improve our health care, and broadly legislate with empathy and fiscal responsibility. As someone who lives on a single income in a working family with four children, 
uh, who at the beginning of the race were 15, 13, 5, and 3, and are now 15, 13, 6, and 4 as of yesterday. Um, I know how hard it is to stretch a dollar. I know that you have a limited income and that when your taxes raise or your health care bills go up, it squeezes the family in a way that is just unsustainable. You know, we've heard a lot tonight about how we can manage our tax dollars, and that's fantastic. But what we need to do is get some people down in Trenton who look at the way forward, who look at how we're going to generate more money. You know, in a household, people take a second job, they revise their resume, they look at mom going out to work, they try to figure out what they can do to make sure that expenses are met and people get by, and that's what we could be doing at the state level right now. This is something I work on anyway. I'm a trained climate reality leader, I'm an honorary advisor with the United Nations NGO Committee on Sustainable Development, and I'm with the Jersey Renews Coalition, which is an excellent exercise in bipartisanship and good governance. Because in that space, all 60 participating organizations, from the unions worried about their jobs and making sure that they can continue building pipelines, to the people calling for a fossil fuel moratorium, are equals in that space, and all have a chair at the table, and all have an opportunity to help write policy together. And that's what Trenton should look like. People working together in good faith, trying to protect our water and our air and our natural resources, our jobs and our people and our public health, and write the best policy we can to move this state forward. Um, having worked with the Business Network for Offshore Wind in that capacity, I've had the great opportunity to see where New Jersey is and our unique position to lead as we move forward into the renewable energy movement. Around the world, 10.5 million people are employed in solar, wind, and biofuels, and that's expected to grow to 28 million by 2050. Let's lead the pack. We have ideal conditions for offshore wind. We have the largest procurement out there. We're looking at 40,000 jobs in the currently leased areas alone. The Clean Energy Act, which our incumbents did not support last year, has generated over 32,000 jobs in its first year alone. And we have excellent conditions for solar as well. This can invite new families in to settle. This can build our tax base. This can generate millions in new revenue for our state. Remember we were just talking about sustainable income? If we're not bringing more money in, we're looking at stretching dollars farther and farther. And while I too am a fiscal conservative, I also wanna make sure that my children don't inherit a financial mess, like our kids would if we don't start changing course and correcting course on where we're going. I'm also worried about our healthcare. See, I'm currently 42 years old and my daughter is six, which was the conditions my aunt faced when she started having headaches one week at a point when she couldn't fit insurance into her family budget. She was a small business owner and the cost of procuring insurance was so much more than she could budget for that she would take care of her kids. She would take her kids to the doctor, but she didn't go for herself. She didn't get her teeth taken care of. She didn't make sure that she went when she had aches and pains. So she started having headaches one week and went to the doctor and they gave her a narcotic painkiller and sent her home. Um, and by the weekend, she was light sensitive and we were putting washcloths on her head and we were trying to help her out, take care of her. Um, we were calling to find out what else we could do and they said she needed a CAT scan. But due to the several thousand dollar cost, she put off that test to Monday. She didn't make it to Monday. She died Saturday night in bed beside my six-year-old cousin who remembers when her mother's brain started hemorrhaging. And if she had gone to the hospital and had a test, a simple antibiotic, would have saved her life. It was a dental or a sinus infection that traveled and took her life because of the costs of healthcare in this country. We need to do better. We need to do better by New Jersey's residents. We need to do better managing our money. We need to do better taking care of each other. And as someone who knows firsthand what it's like to have to make sure that we meet all of our bills, that we pull from savings, that we figure out a way to get by, I don't want to see more New Jersey's families struggle when we have such an opportunity right now to change the course of our state and build the way forward into a sustainable future. My name is Christine Clark. My website is clarkforassembly.com. We're endorsed by a number of organizations, including uh, being the first New Jersey candidate endorsed by Vote Mama PAC, which elects mothers of young women, uh, young children rather, to public office. Uh, we're endorsed by the NJAE, EA, excuse me, and the AFT, the AFL-CIO, the nurses, uh, the firefighters, and a number of other groups that know I will go down there just as I've been for the last few years as a volunteer advocate, fight for us all. I hope on November 5th to have your vote so that I can get that done for you. Thank you. The next speaker is Laura Fortier. Thank you. Hi, everybody. 
thank you all for being here. Um, it's great to, to be here and to represent. Um, Christine Clark and I are your two candidates for assembly. See four on the ballot, you get to choose two. Um, I am from Verona, which is the Essex part of the 26th district. I've lived there for 25 years. I'm a mom to three public school educated kids. I am a small business owner, I'm a wife. I'm a five-time author. I've gotten to be on the Oprah show. And um, if you Google my name, you'll find a TED talk with over a million views. So I've had opportunities to speak to people from all over the place, but this past year has been all about the 26th district. And I'm running to be your assembly person because I can no longer be a bystander to the affordability crisis in New Jersey. I have a child with a pre-existing condition with uncovered medication at the tune of $1,000 per month. So I understand what it's like to live in New Jersey with everything that's going on, right? So here we are in a state that has drug companies that are on the verge of curing cancer, and we have people who can't afford their insulin. We are now the number one ranked school system in the entire country, and yet we have districts going broke, and in Morris County we turn away two-thirds of the students who want to get into our fabulous Votech program. We are a state that has great jobs, great opportunities, and huge GDP coming through here, and yet we have a transportation system that's broken and archaic. So clearly we're not doing something right. We are not investing in the right places. And New Jersey is not moving forward. So I am running with a background of being a small business owner. I have worked for 25 years with individuals, small business owners, and large organizations like NASA, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the World Bank. And what those organizations ask me to help them do is to find the solutions they cannot find themselves. So I don't come in and tell them what to do. I come in and help them speak to each other and figure out the solution that might be right in front of them. So that, I think, would be very transferable to Trent. So people working together to move everybody forward. And that's what I want to do. Uh, my priorities, besides making New Jersey people the priority again, instead of sweetheart deals and handshake deals in our political world, is healthcare education and taxes, and I see them completely correlated with each other. When I knock on the doors, which I do to talk to voters, the number one thing they tell me is their property taxes are too high. So that's where I want to focus the little bit of time that I have here with you tonight. If we look at our schools, some of the towns in the 26th district are taking on the burden of paying 93% of their school budgets from their tax dollars, their property tax dollars. If the, full, the school funding formula were properly funded, it should be in the 70 percentage range, range. So we have work to do to get that formula equally distributed. Also, the health care costs for our schools and staff. Everybody needs to have health care, but we need to do a better job negotiating maybe in larger groups so that we can bring down that variable. Every year it's unpredictable and less gets spent on curriculum and more on our health care costs. Also, special needs is a huge concern for each municipality, and there's talk of bringing that under the state's umbrella of responsibility. That would be a huge relief to our municipalities. Let's talk about rebates. We used to have that homestead rebate. Like to get it back to the before Christie level of help for people, and also veterans only get a $250, give, you know, what do you want to even call it? <laughs> Dinner out for five. Um, off their taxes, and that's an old number, clearly. We need to do better and reevaluate that number and help those heroes get a break on their taxes. We have a lot of waste in New Jersey. No, if you're reading the newspapers and online, that's not news to you. We need to have transparency and accountability in any kind of breaks that we give to anybody because we're not seeing it back where it belongs, which is in our communities. Um, I want to talk very succinctly and especially about how we deal with small problems and overlook them until they become big problems. We talked about the lakes earlier. In 2012, our incumbents voted no to stormwater maintenance tax. Okay, I understand we want to keep taxes down, but when we don't vote for something like that, and then we're calling for $4 million to be the hero and rescue the lakes, this is a problem we could have avoided. So I will wrap up by saying, my name, Fort Gang, actually means moving forward. So I want to help find solutions that move everybody forward. Thank you for being here, and please vote for us on November 5th. We have about 10 minutes left, because we're supposed to end at 9 o'clock. So if there are any 
one who would like to ask a question, just raise your hand and um, you can direct it to the particular person or you can direct it to all of them. We'll give as many of them a chance to opportun opportunity to speak. You have a question? I got a question for all the candidates. You, we all know that Rockaway's been through heck. My question for all of you, including our sheriff candidates, how will you prevent the next bullying by a student, by someone terroristing threats, a synagogue, or a church, or temples, or anything, any of our religious mosques, we have Right now, this country's going through chaos where fight, everybody's fighting each other. How will you, as candidates, work to bring unity to communities? Uh, that's directed at everybody. Okay. Uh, you want to do an answer to that? And then if there's anyone else that would like to answer to It's a great question. When you talk about bullying and those types of things, well, it's called leakage, right? You know, in matters of school violence, let's take that. In matters of school violence, 81% of the time, according to the Secret Service, there's leakage. In other words, someone knew about the behavior, someone knew about the plan prior to the incident, okay? The application, that app, that free app that was developed and launched last week, will do just that. We'll give a voice to children, you know, students, and the community at large to deal with those types of issues before they happen. That's what we want to do. Identify the behavior early with regards to the bullying or whatever, you know, there's bullying specialists in schools, those types of things. It would be the interaction between that reporting mechanism, which is recommended by every smart person, okay, but in the document from the Secret Service, okay. Uh, get it to the right people, you know, the police, the educators, mental health experts, those types of things to deal with those issues before they happen. So that's just one example of what that would ha of how that would happen. Okay. Thank you for the question. Okay. Uh, Thanks for the question to everybody. But I, I just want to tell you my opinion as a law enforcement officer. The app is great, absolutely. But there is no substitute for putting police officers in your schools. Police officers building a bridge with teachers, building a bridge with mental health people. There is no substitute for personal relationships. Our schools are our biggest liability, and it's something that we need to pay attention to. It takes resources to make schools safe. Pat, I'm glad we had an extra 10 minutes. Um, one of the initiatives that I, wor I worked on over the past year was to address that, because I know that there's a synergy when we want to achieve a goal. It's not any one program that achieves a, a particular mission or makes us, a, makes us successful at a particular mission. One of those programs was putting class three specials into our schools. Over the past year, I worked on that. We've been successful. I just put, we have five elementary schools. We have a middle school. We are on the way to putting those bodies into the schools. I hired two former prosecutor uh, detectives um, that are in there now. We have one of our local guys, Scott Haig. I'm sure you're all familiar with him. All highly qualified people. Those kids in that school, you want to talk about bullying? They're going to be able to interact with those officers in the hallway. They are going to have a personal connection. When a child is feeling emotionally distraught, he's going to be able to go to somebody. There's going to be a relationship there. So I think that's going to start. The best process to control that is at the local level by having those officers in the school. And we also put a SRO, a full-time officer, not a retired police officer that serves as a class three. We put a full-time SRO in the schools. That also uh, brings me to the point of, I'm gonna digress for a second, our shared services. That is a shared service initiative between the police department and the school system. And that's something that I did as mayor to build those bridges, to work with our board of education. I know we only have five minutes, and like I said, I'm glad we had an extra minute or two. There's so much that has gone on that has gone on this past year that can speak to that. Thank you.
bullying, been there. Um, it happened to me. But one of the most important things, I think, is when kids come home and say, I've been bullied, and parents are informed. As a parent, if your child has been accused of bullying, take it seriously. We all need to be accountable. Sometimes we don't expect our kids to be the bullies, but let's believe the kids. And if when they tell you something bad was said, something racist, something religious, get, who taught you to say that? Get deep into it, talk to your kids about it, ask them, did you say this? Because eventually you're gonna know. They, you really need to be accountable whether you are the one being bullied and report it, report it, report it. And if your kids are accused, believe it, be accountable, be a part of the action. We need proper discipline, get it taken care of before it leads to tragedy because we have to get better. So this actually speaks to my heart because my son was severely bullied in elementary school. He was punched in the first, in the first week of kindergarten. Um, so in the course of the campaign, we've been going around, we've been listening to different groups speak about the hardships that people hear and feel and experience. Uh, we've listened to people explain how they've come to the opioid crisis, how they've fallen, found themselves in addiction. Um, we've spoken with people who've gone through self-harm, who've had psychological impacts, who've needed special care and special help. We've spoken with people in advocating for the special needs movement, who've explained the hardships that children have go gone through. And I have not heard nearly enough conversation about prevention. A few years ago, I was involved as a voluntary children's rights advocate with the New Jersey Law Review Commission trying to update Title IX to protect children from more known and recognizable signs of maltreatment. That section of the law hadn't been updated since 1974, and there's certainly a lot more that we can do. Um, shaking babies comes to mind as you know things that we can address um, on the front end to make sure that the statute level definition matches what we're practicing um, at the agency level. Um, we also need to work on education. Um, the, statistically, in America, a child is safer in the middle of a bu busy highway than in their own home. Um, and child maltreatment is associated with 14 negative incomes, outcomes excuse me, that impact kids by their teenage years, um, including increased tendencies toward violence, including increased tendencies toward bullying other people and taking out on others what has happened to them. Um, so we need to look at a state level at prevention and education programs. Um, at a local level, we need to look at programs that will teach children coping mechanisms for stress, uh, ways to release anger and hard feelings in ways that don't hurt other people people and de-escalation techniques so if they find themselves in a bullying situation they can work their ways out of it um, these are all things I'm committed to working on and I'll hope that with your vote I'll have thank you so um, I just wanted to add to the conversation that whenever there's issues we have great solutions these are all great ideas but it's about getting to the source and the source of bullying is about power and it's the, the powerless trying to get powerful by making other people powerless. So no matter what remedy we choose, we have to look at what causes people to feel powerless. Are they not heard? Are they not getting what they want? And so that's the invitation that I'm adding to all of us is whatever program we do, wherever we're gonna look at it, you have to get to the source of it. So I'll let him add from a more <coughs> clinical perspective. Again, Dave Timpanaro, uh, freeholder candidate. And I wanted to speak to you, sir. It sounds like you've got a, a pretty broad question. And I, I work with that population I have my entire career. I've spent countless hours in IEP meetings and uh, child study team meetings um, pushing schools to act on their HIV laws and regulations. HIV is uh, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. It's a federal regulation, they have to follow it. Unfortunately, I've spent way too much time in the schools trying to create collaboration when they need to follow through. So, direct answer to your question, it's not just about the schools. From what I understand, you're talking about altogether the safety of people in our communities. And if we look at it throughout the schools, we need to be able to increase communication. Municipality to municipality, 
um, board of eds are off limits. Nobody wants to communicate back and forth. Separate budgeting, <coughs> separate dollars, separate election process. So it, they tend to not want to cross that line and communicate. And that's, I think we're doing our children a disservice from doing that. Right? I think we're doing them a real injustice and they're not having the ability to flourish the way they're supposed to. And we're, we're failing them to keep them safe because of that. All right, in reference to students. Now, I could also say on the other side of that, as you look closer to some of these mass shootings and so on that we do have, um, no issues with, with gun safety, no issues with using a gun. I've shot him myself, all right? I do not have an affiliation, nor do I ever have any interest in having an affiliation with the NRA. Unfortunately, if you look on the other side of the aisle of my opponent, you wouldn't find that same trust. And you'll find that line there. So you have to determine, is it party over people or people over party, right? And to keep people safe in the community, quite simply, the only thing we have to do is increase communication, increase money where it needs to be, and pull it from where you have it. Right? Not every program we're spending money on is efficient. But if we communicate with everybody across the state, right, cross that boundary. I don't care if you like Murphy or don't like Murphy. Guess who he is? He's our governor. So that's who we have to communicate whether we like him or not. It doesn't matter if you like your municipality. It doesn't matter if you like the county people you're working with. I'm not running to make friends. I'm running to make a difference, and that's what we're going to be able to do is if we can increase that communication. If I take my education and I make that happen, I think that uh, that would answer your question. I think we can all be better. Thank you. Okay, just have, um, just make sure that everyone has signed my attendance sheet. I kind of like <coughs> to keep a record of how many people were here, so if you haven't signed it, I'm going to leave it over here on the table, so please sign it. I especially want to thank all of the candidates who took time out of their busy schedules because not only are they working people, then they, they are basically volunteers. When you think about the amount of time they put in in, in political uh, fields, most of them are volunteers. Um, so, and I really want to thank them all for coming. Uh, it's been a wonderful <coughs> evening. I thank, I thank you all. I thank you all for coming. Uh, if your friends and neighbors weren't here, let them know that YouTube will have the video so they can see uh, the responses from the candidates. Um, I thank everybody for the cooperation with the five minute time. I'm, I'm a stickler for that five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pat. That's good. Thanks, Pat.